Northvolt battery manufacturing plant in the very north of Sweden, like many other manufacturers, sources lithium from uh, various global suppliers all over the world, not just China, but China can just get their own lithium because they've got tons of it. Uh, so the, the lithium supply chain is really complex and it involves uh, mining and processing from different parts of the world, primarily from regions rich in lithium reserves such as uh, Australia, Chile, China, and I think Argentina too. Uh, so when the Skeleftia or Sheleftia uh, plant is producing its full capacity, it will make about 60 gigawatt hour per year. But all of the plants in Europe combined will come up to about 170 gigawatt hour, all of the plants from North Vault. When the Skeleftior plant is producing its full uh, capacity, it will make about 160 gigawatt hours per year. And this, this is uh, a different city, so there's, uh, if you're English watching this, uh, Skeleftior and Seleftior. They're two different cities, three or four hours drive apart. Uh, but all of the plants in Europe combined when, for North Vault will come up to 170 gigawatt hours of battery capacity production. Uh, so that's only when the Skeleftior plant is up and running. So the plant in Gothenburg is a joint venture with Volvo Cars and that plant makes about 50 gigawatt hour per year right now. Just... North Vault haven't said who the first customer is at this northern Swedish uh, battery manufacturing plant, uh, but uh, we know that they have a contract worth about 46 billion euro right now. So uh, they supply batteries to BMW, Polestar, Volkswagen Group, uh, Northvolt that is. So Northvolt also recently opened the Hydrovolt EV battery recycling plant in Norway, which I will do a separate video on because it's, it's too interesting to just briefly skim over. Uh, it's way more clever than you might think as well. And I think it's a piece of art as, 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 as an industry goes. So Hydrovolt in Norway, uh, which is a joint venture with Hydro, uh, EV battery recycling plant in Frederikstad, uh, can recycle about 12,000 tonnes of battery packs, which is equivalent to 20 or 25,000 EV batteries. Uh, so Revolt Et, uh, a gigascale recycling plant in Skeleftio, can recycle up to 125,000 tonnes uh, per year to supply metals for up to 30 gigawatt hours of new battery storage or batteries. Northvolt also has uh, R&D laboratories in Vastaros and they have a small-ish battery plant in Poland too which only builds battery storage, not for EVs, that's 5 gigawatt hours in the first year and then it went up to 12 gigawatt, gigawatt hours in 2022 so that's fairly small stuff. Uh, in 2023 Northvolt also outlined a plan to build a 100 gigawatt hour per year cathode material gigaf gigafactory in Borlanga, Sweden because of the uh, cathode material. That's the most expensive part of a battery, as a lot of you will know. And uh, no doubt they will be quite keen to get some control over the supply chain of their batteries. I think largely because of the new battery passport coming into effect this year. And uh, actually, that, that's a big deal. I've also mentioned that, have I, in the past. I won't rant on about that. But on a more broader scale, by 2027, that should be fully in effect and starting this year. So batteries with a 2 kilowatt hour capacity or more for an EV must have heaps of specific data attached to it, such as where the materials came from, uh, the carbon footprint, chemistry, etc, etc, etc. Loads of information, very specific data. So, yep, yeah, me, me. Come on. One thing that a lot of people don't know is that uh, Northvolt is part owned by Volkswagen Group uh, because they now own 20% of the company. This is a big deal, I think, for Volkswagen, uh, because for Volkswagen, owning a part of Northvolt helps secure its supply chain against uh, the backdrop of uh, increasing demand for EV batteries in Europe and uh, potential supply sort shortages uh, from their other sources where they get the batteries from. Or you could say geopolitical issues, couldn't you, affecting raw material availability. Like if materials get ridiculously expensive and you have to buy a battery from China and it costs prohibitive to Volkswagen to do that, for example. So uh, again, especially with the new battery passports looming, it's going to be a lot easier uh, to have locally produced batteries coming with, uh, you know, European a European stamp on it, so to speak. And uh, in Europe, we can see that the EU and local companies, in essence, putting a ring 
they're basically getting a stick in the sand and putting a ring around them. They want to make it easier to buy locally and I guess harder to buy from China. Hence why they just sent a few investigators to China to look over the BYD uh, you know, business, MG, Sake as well, to literally go to their manufacturing plants, talk to the business people and to see if they're building their cars good enough to be sold in the EU. And uh, I guess, you know, check the build quality is good enough. And I mean, check the how ethically they run their businesses. Are, are they basically running their businesses in a sort of European type of way, i.e. not shafting employees, for example, not running a dodgy business and, and making people work 25 hours a day. Uh, but we literally all know that uh, they will come back and make a very, very public announcement that, you know, it's horrendous what they're doing. It's awful. So that's that's how this works. And uh, I think I've had some predictions already without me prompting that. The people in the comments are just saying that. So the EU just need to go through the motions, I think, and set the table, lay the table for dinner, and, and then just go mental on it and say what they want. Um, I recently did a video on the battery passport thing, and uh, I think it was it was that video and another video. A fair few people already predicted that they're going to come back from China, and they will be saying that these Chinese manufacturers are working unethically and not to European standards and that they're probably unsafe or something like that to that tone, I reckon. So I've got no idea why China would even let them in to you know, BYD and SAIC, or even in the country. I don't really understand why, but um, I don't know how they swindled it. That's a big deal that they could actually do that. But I'm fairly sure that, that you know there's a lot of talking going on behind closed doors outside of you and me and everyone. There's just some serious talks going on. And so they probably, the EU probably pried their way in uh, to this and get an agreement. Uh, by spokespeople and the big bosses, uh, and basically from people in, in China. So China wants to sell their cars in Europe. So there's an incentive for them to to be to be nice, I suppose, to a degree. Uh, but they are too good for European companies to be passively okay with. So that's why, rather than just selling them and then them being slightly better, I think everyone kind of kind of can see they're kind of wiping the floor on European vehicles, <laughs> and so the EU is like. Terrified, of course. So they need to fend them off a little bit. That's kind of what's going on. Uh, thank you for watching to the end. And please remember to leave your comments in the comments section. Uh, loads of people read the comments way before I even get to it. So uh, feel free to check in your thoughts. Anything at all, doesn't matter. I'll read them all at the end of the day. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.